Hey there, it's Michael. I wanted to welcome you to Think Crew, and we're going to cover six different things in this Getting Started tutorial. First, we're going to cover navigation. Then I'm going to show you how to create a project, invite some users to that project, import a script, create a schedule, and then I'm going to give you a little tour of that uh, schedule that we just created. All right, so let's take a look at the navigation here, just so you get a, a sense of how things, uh, uh, where things are located. So uh, there are two main navigation areas. There's this area over here on the left-hand side uh, that right now only has two things in it, but that's going to change as we make some changes. Uh, and then over here on the top, uh, there is a search bar where you can search for anything that you currently have in the system, projects, schedules, scripts, uh, we don't have anything in the in the system right now because we just got started, uh, but later on you'll be able to do that. Uh, this question mark right here will take you to the help site. If you have any questions, you can always go there. This is the bug report or feature request, which is a form you can fill out to give us suggestions or if you did find a bug. Uh, this is a link to the old Think Crew site, uh, which was the store, and you can download things there like Casper or Poco. Uh, and then this is the alerts, which we currently don't have any alerts because we haven't done anything yet, but when we do get alerts, that's where they're going to be. And then this is where your profile is, and you can also log out. And you can also toggle these sections over here. So if I wanted that sidebar to go away, I can just click right there. And if I wanted to minimize the sidebar without making it completely go away, I can actually click this thing down here at the bottom. Uh, it gives you a little bit more space if you've got a, uh, a, a computer screen that is not as big. Uh, so that's the navigation. Uh, now that's going to change a little bit as we create a project. So watch what happens here as we as we go ahead and create a project. Uh, to do this, we're just going to click the big green button here that says create new project. And we're going to name our project. And now we got a new project. Now notice that we actually got some new things over here. Uh, first at the top, we have a selector, uh, the current project dropdown, and this uh, lets you change which, your, which project is your current project that you're working on. And, uh, and I'll show you more about this in just one second. But over here on the left-hand side, you can see that now we have uh, It's a Wonderful Life, the name of the project, and three new sections here. We have Users, Scripts, and Schedules. And as we add things to this project, they will go into those individual places. Um, let me create another project here. Just create a, another one here. Just to give you a sense of how this actually works. So now you can see the current project is gone with the wind. I just created that. If I want to switch back to It's a Wonderful Life, you just click on the drop down, and now my current project is It's a Wonderful Life. And so that you understand the distinction between those two things, anything that I do right now, because I'm in It's a Wonderful Life, will be in It's a Wonderful Life. And if I switch back to Gone with the Wind, any scripts I upload or people I invite or any schedules that I create will only be in Gone with the Wind, and they will never be able to, to mix with each other to A, uh, be secure, uh, but also so that there's no confusion. You know, you know exactly where all of your things are. All right, let me switch back to It's a Wonderful Life. You'll see here, uh, the obviously, you have a list of the projects we've created, and you can navigate those. And then over here on the right-hand side, uh, there uh, is some information about the project that is currently selected. If I select Gone with the Wind, this is information about Gone with the Wind. If I select It's a Wonderful Life, there's some information about that. Uh, and this is where lists of all your schedules and your scripts and your users will be. Uh, you can also select things and delete them. I'm just going to go ahead and delete Gone with the Wind because I don't actually need that project. Delete, and now it's gone forever. Uh, and then that's it for projects. Let's go ahead and invite uh, a user to this project. So uh, this is me, uh, and then let's say I want to add uh, the line producer on this particular show to the uh, project. All right, so I'm going to type the email address for the person that I want to invite. If I want to invite more than one person, you can definitely do that. Uh, you could do something like this, just put in a comma and uh, uh, invite as many people as you want. There's no limit. Uh, for right now, I'm just going to invite this one person. And I'm going to click Invite, and boom, there they are. All right, Jane Smith is the line producer I just invited. Uh, and you can see that uh, uh, we now have alerts. Uh, we just got alerted that that person joined the project. You can see that also that they're instantaneously joined to the project. There's no additional steps. 
Uh, that is because uh, Jane Smith, my, my sample person here, uh, already exists in the system. If you invite people that aren't in ThinkCrew already, they're going to receive an email. And then in that email, it will say, would you like to join? And then if they join, they will automatically be added to your project upon their joining. Uh, so they, uh, you'll never have to re-invite them uh, to your projects. If we take a look at uh, Jane Smith here, uh, we can actually set permissions for Jane uh, so that Jane can do some things but not other things perhaps. So let's say I don't want script, uh, I don't want Jane to be able to edit the script, uh, but I do want Jane to be able to edit the schedule. So all I need to do is click the little button right there and now Jane can make uh, all the changes uh, to the schedule that anyone can make. If I want to rescind that invite uh, to, or that rather that permission for the schedule, just click the button again, and now Jane can only read the schedule. Anyone who's been invited can read everything, but only people who've been given permission with these buttons right here are able to actually write or make changes to uh, scripts or schedules. Uh, and then let's in uh, let's uh, import a script here. So I'm going to click Upload Script. Uh, you've probably seen one of these before. It's just a little drag and drop area. You can also click this right here and it will bring up a little file browser for you. But what I'm going to do is just drag uh, this script I have right here from my desktop and drop it right here. This is uh, the final draft version of It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, one of the fun things uh, that you can do is you don't actually need to type the name of the script in. Uh, you could if you wanted to. Uh, what ThinkCrew does is it tries to take the best guess at what the title is based on what's on the title page of the final draft file. Uh, so let's go ahead and give that a shot and see if that works. All right, we're going to click Upload, and it's going to think about it for a second because it's got a lot of work to do. And there we go. There's It's a Wonderful Life. It got the name right, which is pretty good. Uh, and we could edit the details for this. So I can say, you know, just uh, if I want to change the title or something, uh, we're going to leave that alone for a minute. Uh, and then all the usual things. I can delete it if I don't need it anymore, upload more scripts. Uh, I think you get the idea. All right, so let's create a schedule because I think that's probably why we're here. Uh, so I'm going to click Create New Schedule. We're going to name this First Draft. Get a little description. And then optionally, uh, I can import that script into this schedule. Now I don't have to do this. Uh, if I want to just have a blank schedule and just start typing things from scratch, I can totally do that. I would just click Create right now. But I do want to demonstrate how uh, we're gonna, uh, what this looks like. So I'm gonna click It's a Wonderful Life, click Create, and it's gonna import that script. And there we go. So now we have a new schedule that already has everything that can be brought in from a final draft script brought in and imported into this schedule. Uh, we can do things like duplicate and delete and, and all the usual things you might be able to do to something. We can edit the details of it and change the name of it if we want to. But let's go ahead and dive into this because I'm really excited to show you this. Uh, this is going to be pretty cool. All right. All right, so here we are. Uh, this is the schedule that we just created and we've imported the script. You can see uh, the whole script is in here. Uh, it's a Wonderful Life is a pretty long movie. It's uh, 173 scenes. Um, the uh, uh, Think Crew has also uh, imported all of the cast, uh, all of the slug lines, the interior exteriors, day nights. Uh, it has assigned uh, board IDs for the cast based on the um, uh, number of times that character speaks, uh, which of course you can change. Uh, and uh, let me show you a little bit about uh, the navigation here. Let's, let's start off with just showing you the lay of the land. Um, you can see that there are different panes here. There's on the left-hand side, this is a breakdown sheet, which should look pretty familiar to you. Uh, and then on the right-hand side, there is the strip board. But you can also see that there's some tabs up here that further uh, give you more controls over the left and right panes here. So we're currently looking at the breakdown. There's also the Recycle Bin tab. Now the Recycle Bin you may know by a different name in other software. Sometimes it's called a Boneyard. Uh, we're calling it the Recycle Bin. Uh, and any strips that you aren't currently using in your current strip board will live here. So let's say I don't need Scene 5. Uh, just go ahead and click Scene 5, click Recycle, and there's Scene 5 in the Recycle Bin. Uh, let's go ahead and move back uh, Scene 5 though because I'm pretty sure we're going to need that. All right, let's put it back where it belongs. Uh, over here is the script, uh, and you can, you know, read the script and use it to break down uh, your schedule. 
Uh, and then at the very bottom is the day out of days. Now the day out of days uh, currently doesn't have any information in it, of course, because we have not added any day strips yet to the schedule. So we're gonna come back to the day out of days in a little bit. Uh, and as far as uh, moving uh, this up and down, you can see I just clicked uh, on the day out of days tab right there. You can also click on this little arrow over here if, you're, if your mouse just happened to be over on the right hand side. Uh, two ways to do that. Uh, within the breakdown sheet, uh, there's a couple of ways to uh, navigate this as well. Uh, let's say, for instance, that I have the day out of days open, and you can see here that the category section of the breakdown sheet just got pretty small. I can still see stuff, but eh, it's not a lot of room. So there's a little arrow right here, and I can increase the size of this so that I always have enough room to see all of my different elements, uh, and that you can just toggle that uh, whenever you need it. Uh, you don't need to have the day to days open. You could actually just uh, toggle that up anytime you want it. Works just like that. Uh, let's go to a scene here that's got a lot of cast in it. So scene one's got a, got a bunch of speaking parts. If I want to reduce this down so that I don't have all that uh, space being taken up by the cast, I can just click that little carrot right there. And you can roll up any of these categories here to save space if you have a category that's got a, a, just a bunch of stuff in it. Uh, so it's a handy little way to, to navigate. Uh, at the top here, you'll notice there's a whole slew of buttons. Let me run you through these real quick. The most important of these is the uh, top left one here, the menu. Uh, this is all of the different managers, uh, elements, categories, strip boards, and calendars. Uh, there is a way to sort and add days, which we're going to cover in a little bit. You can export your data to uh, Excel or a CSV file if you want. Uh, including an export to Casper. You can publish to PDF, and of course there's some settings you can change for the schedule. New will create a new breakdown sheet. Uh, previous and next will just uh, is a way to navigate through the uh, schedule if you want to use those buttons. Delete will permanently delete a strip. Uh, you want to make sure that you're definitely uh, wanting to delete it and not recycle it, uh, because when you delete it, it's been deleted from all, uh, all of the strip boards. Over here uh, in the right panel, uh, you can add a day. Let's go ahead and just add a day right there. Uh, I can add a banner. Uh, and the way you edit a banner is just click on it here and then type right there. I can duplicate something. So let's say I want to duplicate scene two. Now I got a duplicate of it. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. If I want to merge two scenes together, let's say I want to take these uh, scenes two and three, I'm going to select them both, I'm going to merge them together. Now notice that it is now, this strip is now scenes two and three. Uh, it grabbed all the information from the uh, top strip as far as like the slug line, uh, but it did merge all the casts. So any cast that was in scene two is in there, but also any cast that was in scene three. And of course it increased the page count to the total of those two together. Uh, you can also group strips together. This is a pretty cool thing. So let's say uh, these uh, strips here, let's say 8, 9, and 10, uh, absolutely need to be together at all times. They're for, for scheduling or location reasons. I need those, script, those strips always to be together. I can actually group them. You see this little green line is right here, and the strips got a little bit closer together. Uh, now whenever I click on any of those strips, I get all of the strips selected so that you're always moving this, these strips together as a group and never missing out on dragging one or leaving one behind. And of course I can ungroup uh, if I don't want that group anymore. We already covered Recycle. All of the strips can be viewed in three different sizes, and this is the sizer right here. Uh, you can see a small version of the strips so that just has that top line of the, of the strip. Medium is the standard size, which we were already looking at. And then there's also a large version, which gives you a ton of information about all the scenes. Uh, this isn't filled out, obviously, because we, we have sort of a, a, a brand new schedule here. Uh, but that's where all that would go. Uh, of course, you can uh, pick which strip board and which calendars uh, are current, and that's where you do that right there. And so that's the navigation. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's show you some more stuff over here, like in the breakdown sheet. That's a good place to start. Uh, so the breakdown sheet is in two parts. Uh, there's the top part here, which has all of these fields that you can fill in, the description of your scene, uh, page count, unit, uh, all the usual stuff you would find. Uh, the uh, bottom section here uh, is where all of your elements will go into categories. Um, 
And this works in a way that you might be used to. If I want to add some cast members to this scene, let's say I want to add uh, Mary and Ernie to the scene. I just click on them right there. Uh, you can also uh, add uh, by typing. And of course I can click these little X's right here and remove people from, from the scene if I don't want them anymore. Uh, there's a better way to do this though. That's, that's sort of the old fashioned way to, to, to add things to a, a scene. Uh, let's try something new. All right, so this, is a, this little bar right here is the add remove element bar. Uh, let's say I wanna add a bunch of things uh, really fast. So I wanna add uh, Ernie and I wanna take Mary out and I wanna put Bert into the scene and I want Potter and I want uh, Cousin Tilly uh, and I haven't moved the mouse or, or, or anything. I've just clicked that once on that field and then I can type anything that I want in that field and it will quickly add it to uh, the breakdown. And of course, this works for much more than just cast uh, because ThinkCrew knows where each element goes. It knows that George is cast. Uh, let's go ahead and add uh, some, some elements in some different categories here and I can show you what I mean. So let's say we want to uh, add Potter's wheelchair. All right, so uh, create Potter's wheelchair. I'm gonna hit enter. And then I'm gonna uh, tell it that Potter's wheelchair is a prop. And then it has added Potter's wheelchair to the uh, schedule. Uh, and if I wanna add other things, I can do that too. Let's, uh, Ernie's cab. And Ernie's cab is a vehicle. And so now if I type cab, and I wanna take Ernie's cab out, I take it out, cab, hit enter and notice that when I'm typing cab Ernie's cab the element actually begins with E-R-N-I-E -E. it's it's Ernie's cab but think who's smart enough to figure out that cab uh, is in Ernie's cab and so therefore it's offering us that choice uh, to uh, to add or remove it uh, which we can do in a keystroke so now that we have a good sense of the uh, breakdown, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you some of the managers here. I'm gonna actually start with the strip board manager. Uh, the strip board manager is where we're gonna manage our various strip boards. Uh, right now we just have one strip board called strip board. I'm actually gonna rename this strip board uh, script order because I'm gonna keep this in script order as I make changes to other strip boards. Uh, so now I have a strip board called uh, script, or, script order. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that. And I'm gonna rename this duplicate first pass. Uh, and now what I'm gonna do is uh, change our current uh, 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 strip board to the first pass. Uh, we're now in the first pass strip board. I'm gonna go over here to the calendar manager and I'm gonna give us a start date. All right, so let's say our start date is October 14th. Uh, that's our start date. We're gonna take uh, Sundays and Saturdays off, a regular Monday through Friday week. If I wanted to change that, let's say uh, uh, for location reasons or, or what have you, uh, I need to uh, have Friday and Saturday off. You can just click these buttons right here at the very top. Now Fridays and Saturdays are off and I'm shooting Sunday through Thursday. I'm gonna go ahead and switch that back. Uh, you can also use this uh, to set individual days off. So let's say uh, that is a day off. Uh, this is a holiday. Uh, and then set a universal uh, uh, events for everyone who is on the show who is currently working. So let's say on uh, this day, the 25th, everyone's gonna travel who's working. Uh, you can set fittings and rehearsals the same way. Uh, and these are, are global for everyone. And, and uh, you can do it individually for, for each element too. And I'm gonna show you that in a, in a little bit. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna leave all those uh, right there just to get a sort of a complicated beginning to our, our movie. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Now at this point, we have uh, a strip board that we can make edits to and we have a calendar set up. So the next thing I wanna do is I want to actually sort these strips and I wanna add some day strips. Now, of course, you don't have to do this. If you wanna go through and manually move all of your strips around, uh, that is perfectly fine. You can absolutely do that. This is just a tool that can help you uh, move very quickly if you need to get a board out really fast. 
So let's say I'm gonna sort all of my strips and I'm gonna sort them by set, interior, exterior, day, night, and then I'm gonna sort them by scene number. So I've selected all these categories uh, by which uh, I'm sorting. I'm gonna move those over here to the sort by, and this is what's actually gonna be sorted. And if I wanted to move any of these around, I can use these arrows right here to, to move these things up and down. I'm gonna keep them in this order though. I'm gonna remove the pre-existing day strips because if you recall, we actually did create a day strip out here. I wanna go ahead and kill that automatically. And then I'm gonna add day breaks automatically. And I have some options here as to, as to how to do that. Uh, I can add day breaks by pages per day. So in this example, let's say I wanna add uh, four pages uh, uh, per each shoot day. But let's say I wanna change that actually, and I just know that I need a 45 day shoot for this. That's what the studio has told me. It's gonna be a 45 day shoot. Okay, 45 total days on the strip board. I'm going to click the button and there we go. So what uh, ThinkCrew has done is it has sorted all of these strips first. It got them in the, in the order based on what we told it to do. And then it has added a total of 45 days to the schedule. And of course, you know, we can move all these things around and, and you know, change the schedule as we want uh, to make it. Uh, but it's a good starting place sometimes uh, if you want to have that tool available. I'm going to go ahead and move my banner up here towards the top. Uh, and then uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to start uh, playing with some elements. That's a good thing to do. All right, so in the element manager, uh, this is pretty much uh, looks like the, the strip board and the calendar manager. Of course, there's much more you can do here because there's elements are more complicated. Uh, as before, on the left-hand side, there is a list of all of the uh, things that are in this category. We're currently looking at the cast. Uh, if I wanted to look at props, you can see there's Potter's wheelchair. If I wanted to look at vehicles, there's Ernie's cab. I'm going to switch back to cast. Uh, and on the right-hand side, for whichever of these elements is currently selected, I can change a bunch of things. Uh, let's take a look at George. Uh, George is uh, board ID number one, and his name is George. I can change all of these sort of standard things having to do with the day of the days and holds and drop pickups and all that stuff. Uh, I can also set individual uh, calendar events for him uh, based on his schedule. So let's say uh, George absolutely cannot work on this particular Tuesday. Uh, so I'm going to give him a blackout. And now uh, he will show up as a blackout on the strip board. And let's say individually, uh, I'm going to, the week before we shoot, we start on the 14th. I'm going to say George travels here, uh, he's got a fitting, and then he's got two days of rehearsals, and then uh, that's it for him. And, and while we're at it, let's, let's go ahead and just uh, do that for, for a bunch of folks here, and, and you're going to see why in a little bit. All right, so Mary's going to travel here, and then she's going to have a fitting, and then she's going to have a rehearsal, and Joseph's voice uh, is a voice, but just for the sake of argument, let's go ahead and travel and do a fitting and a rehearsal. Uh, Uncle Billy, let me just sort of click through these real quick here uh, and add some of these. All right, so that'll, uh, that gives us a, a general uh, idea of what that's gonna look like in the future. Uh, we can actually uh, drag these two. Let's say, uh, for instance, uh, man, uh, I don't want him to be that high on the, on the board. I can just grab man and drop him anywhere I want, uh, put him any place I'd like. Uh, and I can renumber the board IDs now that I've, I've changed the order here. Uh, and I can start renumbering from any number. Click go. Uh, and now the correct uh, number has been applied. I can duplicate uh, or merge any of these uh, depending on, uh, you might have uh, uh, extra characters that are actually the same character. Uh, you can filter all of your elements as well. So let's say uh, I want uh, only uh, strips that have MAR. Oh look, there's Mary, Martini, Maria, Marty. Uh, it's a pretty, uh, pretty handy way to, to sort of navigate your way around. And of course I can also uh, link elements. So let's, uh, we have uh, Potter's wheelchair. So this is a really good opportunity. Let's, uh, and Potter always needs to be in his wheelchair. He's always in, in that wheelchair in the movie. Uh, so I've selected Potter. And then all I need to do uh, is type WH for wheelchair. Uh, I could also type out the whole, you know, Potter's wheelchair if I want. Uh, and then 
Potter's wheelchair is now linked to Potter. Anytime I, I create, uh, uh, add, po add Potter to a scene, I'm going to get Potter's wheelchair. But of course, uh, Potter's already in all of the scenes that he's in in this script. So if I want to add him to all existing breakdowns, all I need to do is click this button right here. Boom. Potter is now uh, in his wheelchair in all of the scenes in the script. Uh, let's say, let's take this man right here, by the way. So man, uh, let's say we're going to take all of his lines of dialogue away. And now he's a background performer. He doesn't get any lines anymore. All right, so I've selected man. Uh, and if I want to change his category, all I need to do is click background. Now I have a background performer. His name is man. If I want to make him cast again, just put him back in the cast. He'll go here towards the bottom. I can bring him back up here just by dragging him. and put them right there. Uh, so you can see there's a lot of really uh, good and useful tools in here uh, to uh, help you manage your, your elements. So now that we have a schedule and our schedule has days, of course our day out of days is now active and we have lots and lots of information here in our day out of days. Notice as I scroll back and forth here, by the way, that uh, you always are able to see uh, your element names, the dates across the top, and the totals over here on the right. So no matter where I scroll, no matter what I do, I'm always able to see all that information. You're never going to need to try to use your finger across the screen to, to figure out which line you're on. Um, you can also click on all of these as well. So if I wanted to uh, edit uh, Mary, I can just click right there on Mary and here's Mary's information. Uh, and that's true for, for all of the elements. Uh, I can, of course, uh, look at the day to days for various uh, things, props, vehicles. It'll only show you the categories of which uh, there are things in. So if uh, it's not showing us all the categories where there's nothing in there, because there would be no point. The uh, date range allows us to uh, show uh, a day to days not just for the shoot, but I actually could show the week before for the shoot. And this is where uh, us having added all of those uh, uh, events before the shoot actually becomes really powerful because my shoot starts on the 14th right here, but if I've got a bunch of travel and rehearsals and I want to reflect that on the day out of days, all I have to do is change the dates. And if I want to only see the first week of shooting plus that uh, week before, just select that. Now I'm seeing only the first week of shooting and the week before. And I can set this uh, for any dates. I can show just the second week. Uh, I can show the whole show again. There's everything. I can toggle the days off. Uh, I can just toggle those off if I want to save space and only see the actual days where I'm working. And I can also add a count. Uh, this is really useful for things like trailer data days. Notice here at the very bottom I now have a, a row called daily work count. And this is the number of elements that are working on any particular day. Uh, saves you from having to add them all up and uh, it's a nice little time saver. But one of the really cool things that makes this day out of days different than just uh, a list of things that you would publish uh, is that it is actually live. Uh, so let's say I want to uh, move some days around here. Now watch the day out of days as I do this. And all of a sudden, the day to days changes as soon as I uh, release my mouse and drop these strips. This day to days is live. Uh, whenever you make changes to your schedule, the day to days is changing in real time. So let's move these strips over here. I'm going to drop them right there. Watch the day to days. Everything changes. Uh, and this actually goes both directions. Watch this. So let's say uh, I want day four, this Thursday right here, uh, to be day one. I could go here in the strip board and move all this stuff around, but then I gotta go find day four and select only the strips that are in the day. What if I could actually just drag that column right there and drop it and make changes to the schedule by moving the day out of days? This is a real game changer. I think this is going to be something that is going to make your job lots easier. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, when you're working on your day out of days, you don't need to be in the schedule as much. You can actually just flop these things around. I've got a drop here on Potter. 
Uh, it'd be much better if he was over here on this on his start. So I'm just going to go and drag this, drop it right here. <laughs> of course, I created another drop, uh, complicated schedule. But uh, but you can see now uh, I have the ability to actually just move all these guys around, and the schedule is updating in real time at the same time. That is about it for our quick tutorial. Uh, this was just the basics. There's way more you can do with Think Crew, but I think this will give you a good starting place from which to start creating uh, your own schedules. Uh, if you have any questions uh, or comments, uh, please hit us up on Facebook or Twitter. We'd love to answer your questions or, or hear what you're thinking. And of course, if you have ideas, we love ideas. So please let us know if there's a cool thing you've thought of, uh, a tool that you use in your work, uh, there's always room for this site to grow and to become better. Thank you very much, and I really hope you enjoy using ThinkCrew.